Hey traders, welcome to this week's trade planning session, the show where we look at the opportunities that could be setting up in the Forex markets for the week ahead. So I hope you had a good week in the market. Certainly there were some great opportunities to be had there. There were some really nice moves. It was a little bit slow in patches, but by the end of the week, there were some really nice opportunities to make profits. And a lot of those we spoke about in last week's trade planning session. And the good news is that there are some opportunities that are setting up this week as well. So as we come out of the summer months and we go into the back end of the year, there are going to be lots of opportunities presenting themselves. And that is exactly what it looks like in today's show. So let's waste no more time and let's jump straight over to the charts. We'll start by taking a look at the Aussie CAD. So the Aussie CAD here, as you can see, has been moving down. We've actually we've been talking about this for the last the last couple of weeks now. It hasn't actually moved yet but it does look like it's going to. We can see that the market, and again, I spoke about this in last week's show and the week before. Uh, we'll go over it again anyway for those of you that are new to this. You don't have to go back and trawl over those, those shows there to figure out what it is that we're saying. But ultimately, the market has been in a downtrend. It did try to break up. It failed to get above this structure. Well, it got above this structure point, but then the breakout was a, a failed breakout. I then broke back below. The market started selling off. And what we've got here is the market pulled back to a previous level. So if I put this in here, we've got a previous level of support in and around this area here. Just pull it down a little bit more, which then acted as resistance here. The market then sold away. It's come back to it and it's treated it as resistance again. Now, we're sort of at a bit of a, a tricky area in that the market could actually, it could break up from here. All right. So looking at this area here, if we get the market break up above 0 0.9121, then potentially we're going to see a complete trend change in the Aussie CAD here. But if we take a look at where, where it is at the moment, it's trading below the 20 period moving average, which is an indication that the momentum is to the downside. But trading below the 200 MA, which again is another good indicator just to show us the, the general direction of the trend. And before, you know, you price action traders out there sit there and shout to me saying, you know, the moving averages don't tell you anything. You know, I, I trade price action myself. I love price action, but I don't see there being anything wrong with using some indicators here and there just to be able to give you a little bit of quick you know, a quick overview, some context on what's going on in the markets. And for me, I use moving averages that way. I think it's it's a really great way just to get a very quick view of which direction is the trend and which direction is the overall momentum. And then and this chart here is telling us that the trend is to the downside, momentum's to the downside. Then of course we wait for price action. You absolutely you have to wait for price action. You can't just try and get into a trade because an indicator is telling you to do something because most of the time the indicators are, are lagging. They're based on price. A so price is always going to be your best entry sort of strategy using price action, although the indicators can help you contextualize price and try to figure out you know, what the general direction it is that's going. So looking at this here, I think that if we can get a break below 0 0.8917, then that potentially is going to open up the doors for the market to get down towards 0 0.8735. The way that you play that, of course, I mean, we've got the momentum candle there from, from Thursday. So if the market opens somewhere here and then Monday breaks below it, you could get a quite aggressive trigger in there. Or you could wait for a little bit of extra confirmation. And that's waiting for the second momentum candle to print beneath this level here. So to get a close below here and then take the sell from that. That's an opportunity for you as well. The Aussie yen is something that um, I've actually been in now for a little bit over a week, I think. So I got in a little bit over here. The market went with me initially. It then went sideways. It's now, you know, sort of playing with these highs. I think from an energy perspective and from a, you know, a fundamentals perspective, this pair still does go higher. Whether it goes higher immediately or it breaks back down to this trend line, before it does that still remains to be seen. I'm obviously in this trade right now. If it breaks down to that trend line, I'll be taken out of this trade because I've got my stop relatively tight in here. I've used the two bar low as a stop. So we'll see what happens there. But I still think that if we get a break above sort of these highs here, 
the 96 spot 91 level, then that really is a good indication that we're going to get the next leg up in the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, maybe something similar to what we have here. We've got this nice energy build up. The market it hasn't broken through the highs, but the lows are kind of getting higher. You know, so this low, this low is higher than this low. This low obviously is not, but it only spent a day beneath this level before that well not even a day then the market got you know bought back up which is a good indication of where the market's going so i'm still bullish in the aussie yen i'm still looking for well obviously i want to take profits on this but if we then get above this level i would look to get back in on that trade there the aussie new zealand so this one here is potentially it's not as clear-cut um, obviously, we've got a pullback to this previous level here. You don't see it so much in the dailies. You see it on a lower time frame. But we've got the market pullback to this previous level of resistance, which you know we were hoping was going to act as support. Hopefully, if we can get a bullish momentum candle, all right, in the next day or two, that sort of just completely engulfs this candle here, and then gives us a break to the upside. I think there's still a, got a good opportunity to, to buy the Aussie New Zealand. Obviously, if it breaks down from here, then all bets are off. You need to then look at another opportunity. Now, when we're trading the pairs, obviously, you want to look at the majors, right? Because the majors are going to drag these in a particular position. And what we can see here of the Australian dollar is it is selling off. And that might be something that puts a bit of a spanner in the works if you're looking at something like the Aussie New Zealand, which you're looking to buy, or the Aussie yen, but obviously is going to give a tailwind to something like the Aussie CAD. So if the, <clears throat> excuse me, if the Australian dollar does sell off from here, you know, obviously look to see the way that it reacts at the lows of 0 0.6681. But if we can get down there with some momentum and we can break below there, then, you know, obviously we don't really want to look at the Aussie New Zealand. The Aussie yen would also then be questionable, but it would mean the, the Aussie CAD would be a great opportunity to take a look into in that overall context. If we're looking to go long the yen, there are some other opportunities there. So we've got the CAD yen, which again is sort of playing with the highs. It probably is a nicer picture than we have with the Aussie yen. And the, the Aussie yen, as you can see here, it's been trying to break up for a little while. The CAD yen hasn't quite had that many attempts. You know, the lows are really sort of higher lows. We're playing with this previous level of resistance, which has acted as support. So I think if we get above 107 spot 67, then we need to become buyers. We then need to start looking for those momentum candles to start getting long in the market. But let's just pay attention to this now because we are nearing the highs. You know, it's not like you're taking a trade back below here where you have a little bit of runway before you get to the highs to lock in a little bit of profit. We're really trading directly at the high. So let's wait until we break through there before we take the trade. The, the same goes with the franc yen. So the franc yen here, we are really at the highs now. So let's just wait until we, and particularly looking at this price action where it's got up here and it started moving sideways. Now let's just wait to see what happens. If it can break through there, then this is going to be a you know solid opportunity, a really great opportunity to, to buy um, buy the franc yen, obviously sell the yen. So play into some yen weakness, which I think is going to be the, the move generally going forward over if we go into the back end of the year. Um, so that, that would be a good opportunity to look into that there versus something like the Aussie yen, although the Aussie yen is still valid. If we then go, the next one that I've got on my radar is the pound yen. Now this is going to sound like a bit of a strange one to you in that the pound has obviously... If we look at the pound dollar here, it's been selling off very aggressively. We've been we've been selling this. I think I've mentioned this in some of the videos that you want to sell this. But the reason that I'm looking at the pound gen is that this here has now gone a very, very long way. And at some point in time, you're going to get the market participants, all of the sellers in the market here, they're going to take profits. And when they take profits, it doesn't mean that the overall trend changes but it does mean that you're going to get some demand in in the pound dollar so some demand for sterling which is going to push this up now if this pushes us up and it plays into our narrative of the yen also gaining some some weakness then what we might see here is we might see the pound yen break up a little bit at least up towards these highs and as you can see here we've got plenty of room in between where the potential entry point is and the highs to allow us to get in there and exploit that view. So if the market starts breaking up in the pound yen and that coincides with the pound dollar also breaking up, so we see a little bit of profit taking there as well, then 
the pound gen is a, is, a, is a great trade, something that we really want to take a look at and really pay attention to because I'm not saying that it's going to go on and break new highs. It might do, but I certainly can see this coming up towards the highs, which is more than enough room for us to be able to get in there and to be able to, to make money. The last one is the Kiwi Yen. So like the Kajen, like the Frank Yen, like all of the Yen pairs, and I say this all the time, you know, the, these are correlated trades. You're not going to find yourself taking every single one of them. You're not going to take the Aussie Yen, the Kaj Yen, the Frank Yen, the Pound Yen, and the Kiwi Yen all at the same time. You know, what you want to do is you want to take one or two, perhaps break, break up your position if you want to mitigate some of your, your risk and hold multiple different, you know, correlated pairs. But if we just go to the setup in isolation, then we would say that, again, this looks like a good one. It's a bit more harmonic. And that the, you know, of all of them, the price action here isn't as chaotic. You can really see the swings here, which is great. So if we can get above the 87 spot 36 level, I think then we need to look to start becoming buyers and getting involved in the market in this. The same way as we're looking at all of the other yen pairs. And just looking across the, the list here, it looks like really this is this is the week of the yen. So don't get in all of them. They may not all go, you know, they may all just turn around and go in the opposite direction, which could then give us opportunities in other pairs as well. But they're the ones that I see right now. Before we wrap it up, let's take a quick look at the indices, which I was asked to look at last week. I said, we want to be sellers, if you remember. Right, we want to looking, we came into this big sell-off over here, um, which we said, you know, off the back of the, the comments coming out of the Fed, we can really see a bit more pain in the indices there. And that's exactly what played out. And the, the Dow, which you can see here, some of you refer to it as the US 30, it's the Dow Jones. Um, but essentially, you can see that this one didn't sell off as much as something like, you know, the, the Russell, which we can see here. So there was a lot more movement in the Russell, but all of them, S&P as well, NASDAQ, you can see all of them there sold off quite nicely, gave you some opportunities to take profits. What do we do next week? I think potentially we look for some more weakness across the board. Obviously, we had the non-farm payrolls come out on Friday, which painted a bit of a, a positive picture in terms of the labor market in the US. Um, but, you know, from that perspective, I, I think that that just really gives a little bit more weight and a bit more, um, I don't know what the word for it is, support for the Fed if they want to raise interest rates and in that the, the labor market is doing OK at the moment. So they're not going to completely decimate the economy if they were to do that. So, you know, I, I can see that there will be some more some more weakness in this going into next week. Obviously, wait for the price action. But if you do get the price action, then, you know, get involved and look to take a trade there. And then finally, I just want to talk very, somebody asked me to talk briefly about Bitcoin. So Bitcoin here, as you can see, it has been in a, for the whole year, you know, since the highs of, of last year, it's just been in a downtrend. It's been selling off and selling off and selling off. And here, I think really you need to be bearish if you're trading Bitcoin. From an investor's perspective, these levels here are, if you're looking to sort of do a bit of dollar cost averaging and things like that, these levels here are good opportunities to buy a little bit more. I personally would love to see it come down to to 10,000. I don't know if it gets there, but if it does, then I will, you know, I'll get involved in a little bit more of these as well. I'm looking at this. I'm not really trading cryptos or anything like that. I do it from an investment perspective. So my time horizon is five to 10 years um, down the line. So looking at this here, I like this because I feel like there are, these are bargain prices. And these are good opportunities to get involved. So I'll kind of, you know, get, buy a few Bitcoin here and there at these levels. If it drops down some more, I'll buy, buy some more for sure. But I'm not then looking for it to make me money next week or next month. I'm quite happy to wait and see where it is in the next three or four years. You know, and if in three, four or five years time, the market's back up here, then I would have done very well for myself. So from a trading perspective, I, stay, I think it's just you have to be a seller. You need to be looking for you know, sell, selling opportunities. But if you're looking at it from a, an investment perspective, then these are, the, you know, we're looking at some of the lows right here. Could be temporary lows, but could be an opportunity to add some to your portfolio from here. All right. So that wraps up this week's trade planning session. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's helped you. It's given you a bit of food for thoughts. Remember that everything I talk about here, they are my own opinions. They're things that I'm doing with my own account. I'm not telling you to go and do it. I'm just literally giving you a little bit of analysis, giving you something to think about 
you then need to go away and do your own analysis, your own due diligence and decide whether or not these opportunities are right for you. And then if they are right for you, if it fits within your portfolio, within your overall strategy, you know, your, your risk management, then look to take some of these opportunities. But it has to be your decision. If you liked the video and you aren't already subscribed for the ch to the channel, there are a number of you that, that won't be subscribed. So you see these things pick up, uh, pop up on your YouTube feed, you think you're subscribed, but you're not. So if you're not subscribed, please go beneath the video here, click that, click that subscribe button, also click the bell so that you get a notification as and when I release these videos. So as soon as I get them up, you're able to get in there, you're able to, to see the analysis, see if it fits within what you're looking at as well, and then kind of go from there, all right? So thanks so much for watching this video. Until the next one, have a fantastic week in the markets, and I will speak to you very, very soon. Take care now.